Hi, it's Paul from Sailing Cape Louise, and I've had a few people inquiring about what does it actually cost to go dinghy cruising. So in this video, I thought we'd talk about a few things you should consider. Firstly, do you buy second hand or do you build? Well, I'm building a boat in a shed in the back of my yard. No, really. Oh, and we are going sailing as well. A seven boat raid up to Mile Lakes. Should be good. Well, I don't have the room to build a full-size boat, so here's a model of Cape Louise. I'll show you the finished results later. Mile Lakes is a large waterway that's perfect for dinghy cruising, and it's about three and a half hours north of Sydney. How was the drive? Pretty slow. Yeah? A lot of traffic. It was good for me. I got here in two hours, 20 minutes to Bulladila and then along the dirt road probably another 20 minutes. Yeah, no, well, there's a lot of traffic up to um, the end of the freeway. It's <laughs> lots and lots of trucks. My, yeah, but you, had, rain. you had to come across the city. So. Yeah, it's an extra hour. Yeah. Well, Chris has put a tabernacle on his boat, which wasn't there before. Why did you do that, Chris? Um, the main reason is that the mast is quite heavy. It's solid yeah, Oregon, yeah. and it required me to hold it upright and sit it into the mast step, which was pretty awkward and not the safest procedure. Yeah. So now I have the tabernacle. I can basically have it secured on the boat, and I can just rotate it up quite fairly simply. And, little, and it's little, easier to do by yourself, obviously. I can do it by myself, and there's lots, um, a much lower chance that I'll drop the bloody thing. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you make this out of? This is all spotted gum. Right. The timber's all spotted gum. So this was leftover decking from your Leftover place. from decking from my decking yeah. renovation. and why not? It looks very good, I have to yes. say. And I love the brass fittings. Yeah, already starting to uh, tarnish up yeah, the Yeah, I know. Nothing I can do that about that. So it's working so far. So the, at, right at the base there, there's the flat section of timber. Yeah. That's, that's sitting directly above the original step, which, which ah. is really just a hole. Right. It was just a square hole in the bottom, in, yeah, on the yeah. keel. Yeah. And so this one now just sits on it. And the original mast was um, this, this diameter all the way down to the down to the step. Yeah. So in order to um, have a fairly stable mast in the tabernacle, I I also cut some spotted gum. I, I planed these sides square, so it ended up square, and then laminated these yeah. pieces on. Yeah. With epoxy. So it's nice and tight yep. in the tabernacle. Very tight. Pull this up in the street, and all, all my neighbours think it's quite weird. <laughs> this crazy man. Well, especially as you keep hitting the power lines, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is how it's done when you buy yourself dinghy cruisers. Yeah. So, have you got a good dental plan? Um, you have a good dental plan. <laughs> Very good. What else have you done, Chris? Well, since our last epic adventure <laughs> at Lake Macquarie, I've added cleats onto the centerboard case right here for the, oh, yeah. for the jib sheets because I didn't have anything to hang on to them before, so I was kind of doubling up on the centerboard. So these cleats should help me a lot. Um, yeah. I've moved the furler. I put a new furling line in, a longer furling line. Right. Previously, the furl line would only make it to here, and I would have to move forward to furl the headset. Yeah, yeah. So now I've made a much longer line, probably longer than necessary, but and I put a new cleat here, so now I can clip, furl my headsaw from 
back here without having to kind of reach forward or, and leave the tiller. Good idea. So hopefully that will save me some time. And the other thing I've added is I showed the, uh, your last video to my sailmaker, Barracuda Sails. Yeah. And um, he suggested I add a vang. Right. To stop the boom bouncing along. Yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of... Um, you lose quite a lot of uh, power when the boom is moving too much. Yeah, so yeah. I've added a vang. So that's new as well. I haven't even tried any of this stuff out yet. This is the uh, the new vang, the new cleats, ah. and the new furler. So we'll see how it all, that all goes. So we're at Violet Hill Boat Ramp at uh, Mile Lakes. The campground's actually shut because there has been a little rain. It's very wet here, but the boat ramp's open. So it's, I don't know, about three o'clock. I think we're going to head over to Johnson's Beach, which is right behind me. It's only about a 10 minute sail. And then the other guys will be turning up tomorrow. Uh, Dave might turn up tonight, we'll see. I'll give him a call in a minute. Um, it, the wind is meant to pick up later on this afternoon, but at the moment it's not too bad. There's nobody on the water other than us. Gentle breeze. Hear the birds, it's fantastic. I just love it. Absolutely love it up here at Mile Lakes. And I don't think we'll get a sunset tonight, but it uh, doesn't really matter, does it? We've got the place to ourselves. Just come back aboard, it's about 10 o'clock at night. We've had dinner around the campfire. Um, Dave got there eventually. Uh, the rain came and went a few times. We did get a little bit wet, but not too bad. Um, yeah, so we're bedding down now, and uh, everybody else will turn up tomorrow, hopefully. See you in the morning. Well, good morning. Beautiful morning, very quiet, there's no wind. It did rain a little bit last night, but not too bad. But I had a really good night's sleep. It's so peaceful here, it's beautiful. I don't know what time it is, probably six or seven in the morning. So we'll have some breakfast, and then we'll go over to meet the other guys at Barley Hill that probably turn up at nine or 10 o'clock this morning. Morning, Chris. Morning, Paul. How was your new uh, tarp for you? Very good. This is an old tarp I had from another boat. It wasn't quite wide enough for this purposes, so I had an extra about a foot sewn around all around the edges to uh, just give make me it a bit wider. Oh, okay, that's a good idea. Wide. And that's canvas, isn't it? Feel yeah, they call it ripstop. Not cheap. Anyway, that seems to have worked. Oh, what a beautiful morning. It is. It's so it's peaceful. It's absolutely peaceful. It's so yeah. peaceful here. As you can tell, Chris's boat is quite chippy, just in its design. And he's sitting on the side he sleeps on, and now it's actually level. But that's only because you had a, a good idea. What, what did you do I there, did. Chris? So it came to me the other night, um, a solution to add more buoyancy to the side I'm sleeping on. And so what I, I made a trip to our local Bunnings and I purchased pool noodles. Pool, pool noodles? Pool noodles. Pool, pool noodles. Pool noodles. Pool noodles. And I've secured them under the hull. And it gives more flotation and on that side. It gives me flotation, additional flotation on this side of the boat. And so when I sleep, the boat doesn't peel over so much. What a great idea. Yeah, so, and it cost me Next less to... than 20 bucks. Very good. <laughs> so, you can see my anchor buddy in action. It works really well. An anchor buddy is basically a large rubber band made out of a silicon surgical tube. You attach one end to your anchor and the other end to the boat. Using your stern line, you can pull your boat ashore and then the anchor buddy pulls the boat back into deeper water. So 
a great idea. There is a bit of blue sky up there, yeah. So the day is looking good. Did, something interesting did happen last night. We're sitting around the fire, it's eight o'clock at night. Uh, this is quite remote here. You've, you've got to realize this is quite remote. There is a track in that the ranger comes in. Anyway, eight o'clock last night, we see these torches and these two guys appear and they're security guards just coming to check nothing bad was going on in the park. Not a lot of wind, as you can see. I'm trying to head over to the boat ramp to meet everybody else, but um, progress is slow. But it's beautiful here. You have to agree. So this is Lens Hartley 14, and he seems to have heaps of room. Normally you get a cabin on a 14, don't you? Yeah, Paul, yeah, look, I, I wanted a big open cockpit, um, and I'm happy just to shovel my gear up there. Yeah. Leave the whole uh, rear of the cockpit for sailing and uh, almost ready to get, get a bit more ship shape and then we'll be off. It's a very fast boat too, the Hartley. It, um, it is, I think it's got a good sail area. When you decided to get a boat, why did you choose to build? Um, look, I wanted to build a boat. Um, you, you certainly don't build a boat because it's cost effective. The cheapest way to get on the water is to buy a second-hand boat, yeah. uh, perhaps even a fixer-upper. Um, I didn't even keep track of the costs when building the boat. It's, it's sort of a case of... But wasn't it up around the 11,000, 12,000 mark or something like uh, that? I, I would guess that all up it would be around that, yeah. that sort of figure. And, um, and of course, you, you know, no one's ever going to pay that kind of money for it. Um, you know, second hand, yeah, so you yeah. don't really get your money back. But I, I built it because yeah. I love the building process. How are you, Josh? I'm very well, Paul. How are you? Very good. And this is the painted trim. It is, and I've just finished putting everything in it. Oh, you, oh, you, we've, we've you've got rid of, you've got no Moroccan covers. What's, no, what? no, we've gone, we've gone conservative in oh, our old age. Okay. Um, it was hurting my eyes when the sun hit them. <laughs> No, we've gone for a, a cream and grey colour scheme. Yes. We have storage up the front now under cargo netting. Oh, very good. I like uh, this. So I can, hopefully we'll lose less stuff if yeah. I fall over. Well, you're not going to go over, so don't say that. Okay. <laughs> well, the wood will go first. Well. And yeah, first time out in it. So which which is the pearl colour? Which so is... that is all this. Okay. Okay. So that's pearl. Yep. Very nice. And this is just the grey Kiwi grip non-slip. Yeah, yeah. Which kind of blends in. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the, the, the transom is the um, Pacific blue. Which looks very nice. From uh, Norglass. So yeah, it's come up really yeah, nice. Yeah, very good. It's well I've... worth doing. It's getting a bit sad looking at uh, raw epoxy and paint just flaking off. I've been watching you sanding and stuff. <laughs> oh my god, big job. Yeah. Six weeks. Wow. About 50 hours, I reckon. Wow. Colour. That's it looked like you colour matched. <laughs> so how many coats of varnish you got on the trove? Well, the back's just been recently done because of my little accident we had last time. Oh, yeah. So what actually happened? Well, so because the motor was yeah. sitting, I didn't have their brackets on there. Yeah. So the motor was clamped above the knees here, like just like that. Right. And I, I leant over to adjust the trim and I yeah. put too much weight on it and it split all the way across here, just oh. above. You can see I fixed it now, but yeah. it's good repair. I was happy with how it turned out. Yeah, but um, but I, I, the transom's actually probably three quarters of an inch shorter than it used to be. That was a bit of excitement. It was. Fortunately, only lasted about 30 minutes. So. Yeah. But having said that, I'm going to leave the reef in just in case. Yes, the thunderstorm did come through and there was a big squall. Everyone went for cover, um, dropped an anchor, rode it out. It's still a bit, little bit drizzly, but I think we're okay. But it was quite a big squall. Now we're heading off to Shelley's Beach on the Big Lake and having a look at some of the islands.
so there still might be some rain in it, but uh, at least the wind's died down a bit. I thought it was coming from behind us. Well, I'm going to go behind the island and just get out of the wind a bit. It's definitely dropping a bit, so I've just shaken out the reef. I think everybody else is doing the same. Heading off around one of these islands. I was getting a bit worried there. I, I could hear this lapping of water. I thought, my God, there's a gust now where it is. I made a new motor mount yesterday, so I wanted to test it out. Ah, so what, what is that? You've got electric something? It's a trolling motor. Oh, okay. How long do you reckon your battery lasts for? I don't know. I haven't run it flat yet. I'm just checking out the new Raid Stubby holders. And guess what, Mark? They work. So as you can see the wind has dropped completely so uh, we're calling it a day and we're going to use the uh, outboard to get us back. That's Chris's outboard's going to give me a tow, saves my battery a bit. There's Bruce and Ollie down there, they missed uh, most of the wind unfortunately so now they're sitting in the doldrums. So this is Finn in her 125 dinghy which um, goes like a rocket. Tell me about your outboard fin. Uh, so it's a little trolling motor and um, it just slots onto my rudder. How do you attach the outboard down the slot? There's some little um, brackets I printed. You you made? Yeah, I printed the, 3D printed them. You th oh, slot I'm impressed. The... Dinghy cruisers out there, 3D printing your own fittings. That's the way to go. Very good. Did you ever think about building a boat? Or were you always just going to buy a second-hand boat? And... Uh, so I did build a boat. Built a, called a hot rat dinghy. Don't know that one, Basically I'll look it up. plywood box, plans are free. So we kind of call it the Bunnings boat a bit because the whole thing came from Bunnings. Do you still sail it? Yeah, I sail it every now and again. At the moment, I build it with a friend. Yeah, yeah. At the moment, it's at his place. Wow. And what made you choose the 125 when you were looking for a boat? Or you, you, you said you raced them, so what, you were just, it just made sense, did it? Uh, so I was, uh, we've got 12 and a half feet in the carport. <laughs> so the boat had to be 12 and a half feet long or shorter. Yes, that sort of makes sense. And I was looking for a pacer originally. Oh yeah, yeah. Because uh, I wanted to sail something with my kids. And um, just came across 125s and they seemed like a pretty similar boat, except they've got a trapeze, which is fun for kids. and. Yeah. So I uh, got yeah. one of these instead. Do you actually ever get on the trapeze or yeah, I put, put my, the... my kids on? Really? Yeah, well, we race it on um Isn't there laws against that? <laughs> it's great fun. <laughs> it doesn't make much difference if you put a six year old on the trapeze, but they love it. <laughs> oh wow. Bit of a ferocious thunderstorm's just blown through. And now it's raining. We've had everything today.
So the storm has passed and the consensus is everybody's going to cook on board and then we'll have a fire after that. It's only about 5.30 though, but um, <laughs> people have got a little bit wet, um, moving, moving, more, uh, moving anchors and uh, whatever. So there's a few damp boats. Anyway, we're going to get a sunset, not as nice as last night, but hey, at least the wind's died down. So it's a good time to look at some more dinghy cruises from around the world. And if you want to send me a photo of your boat, send it to sailingcakelouise at gmail.com. So much happened on this raid, there's just not enough room to get it into one video. So coming up, there's more advice on what sort of dinghy to buy, more tips and tricks, and the perfect day's sail. And I've also discovered the perfect boat for dinghy cruising that's just come up for sale in Australia. So I'll give you the details for that in part two. And of course, there'll be more viewer photos.